Good evening. This is front page by AIM Network, India's video first newsroom for AI, infrastructure and the new power games of this decade. Tonight, we break down why OpenAI's India expansion is likely to get a Tata push, how it ties to Stargate and what it means for the India versus the United States race in the AI data empire. So besides announcing CodeRed alongside releasing a reasoning model next week, which was covered extensively here on front page. It was codenamed Garlic and laying intelligence one model at a time since GPT-40. Guys, remember, again, front page has been on this story since day zero. So you got from Jamnagar versus Stargate to Google Adani's 1.25 lakh crore AI hub in Wysak to NTT's new AI-ready campus in Devanahalli. With all of this, the Tata piece has finally entered the board. Let's decode it. Before that, make sure to like, share and subscribe. This is quite important for all of you, given how India is the largest market for OpenAI outside the United States. Remember, the company currently houses more than 800 million users globally. But according to an exclusive report in the Economic Times, OpenAI is in advanced discussions with the Tata Group, specifically TCS, Tata Consulting Services Hyperwall data center platform to anchor its India expansion. Here's the core of the deal as reported. So OpenAI does not want to own land or buildings in India. It simply wants capacity, hundreds of megawatts of high density compute on tap. And TCS Hypervault is building a gigawatt scale data center footprint over the next decade. It's backed by investors like the TPG across multiple Indian locations. And OpenAI could become one of its anchor tenants, effectively a long-term wholesale customer for AI-grade racks and power. And OpenAI strives for the Tata hand to, you know, crucially, you got to understand that Tata is not chasing equity in OpenAI. They don't want a flashy cap table entry. They want to be the railway and the power company underneath OpenAI's India presence, which is the preferred infrastructure partner that builds rent for the next 20 to 30 years. So OpenAI strives for Tata hand to, you know, in simple words, OpenAI should bring the models and Tata should bring the megawatts. So if this closes, you're looking at something like OpenAI for countries, but an India edition that is running on a Tata, which is TCS backbone, instead of OpenAI coming here and trying their own and operate on the Indian infra all by itself. So now let's zoom out and take a pause because barely a month ago, OpenAI and Oracle announced plans for a $7 billion data center in the Saline Township at Michigan. It's roughly half an hour from the University of Michigan, and the campus is expected to deliver around 4.5 gigawatts of power to Stargate. Remember, Stargate is OpenAI's mega compute program for frontier AI models. And is being pitched as the largest economic project in Michigan's history, with thousands of construction jobs and hundreds of permanent roles, but also massive local concerns about the water use, grid stress, and the housing prices. So, why am I talking about this? Why does a farmland in Saline, Michigan matter for India? Because it shows you OpenAI's new playbook, which is to pick a strategic region, pair it up with a heavyweight infrastructure player. In the US, it's Oracle. Here, it's going to be TCS. It's going to build multi-gigawatt compute campuses tied directly to Stargate. Now, again, apply all of those components in the template to India. In the US, you have Oracle plus Saline. In Europe, you have Acre and Nscale type partners in Norway. In India, very likely it's going to be Tata and their TCS Hypervault if the ET report stands, of course. So clearly, OpenAI is trying to build an AI grid, a global mesh of high-density compute hubs, each powered by a local industrial giant, all of it connected back and plugged into Stargate. Now, the real question that many of you might be asking is that, what does India want from this grid? Does it mean just cheaper chat GPT or a real say in how this infrastructure is built, powered, and governed? Take a look at India's map. You got Jamnagar, Vizag, Bengaluru, and now Tata coming into the picture of the compute infrastructure. And the AI infrastructure grid has expanded super fast in the last 18 months. Take a look at Jamnagar, Gujarat, because you got Reliance AI Fortress with Google and Meta landing subsea cables and AI compute. Then you got Vishakhapatnam in Andhra Pradesh, Google and Adani's $15 billion, one gigawatt AI data center campus is Google's largest AI hub outside the United States. Then regions like Navi Mumbai and Noida, 
You got local player Utah's sovereign AI campus with 8000 NVIDIA Blackwell GPUs powering models like our very own Servam AI. Then right here in Devanelli, Bengaluru, you got NTT Global Data Centers 100 megawatt Bengaluru 4 campus with 67.2 megawatt critical IT load and a 220 kilovolt substation. Now an entirely new node could join this map because you got the TCS Hypervolt which is again Tata's gigawatt scale data center platform across Mumbai, Chennai, Karnataka and more with OpenAI as a potential flagship tenant if the deal closes of course. So taken together, India's AI mesh now has three overlapping, overlapping pillars that is. You have the global cloud giants which is Google, Japan's NTT and Oracle and the Indian infrastructure major players like Adani, Reliance, Tata, Yota, TCS and Sifi. Then of course you've got the frontier model labs, you've got OpenAI, Meta, Anthropic and others linking their compute to this network of infrastructure players. And this might emerge as the backbone of India's AI economy. Because for OpenAI, Tata is the safest, least controversial partner in India. Because look, Tata as a company has a deep trust with regulators, enterprises and governments. And TCS, as we all know, already runs core systems for banks, airlines, telecom companies and public infrastructure. The Tata group goes beyond and also controls power, steel, telecom, logistics and software. Everything needed to get an AI grid run right in a proper way. So OpenAI's pitch right here is simple. Give us one Tata scale pipe of power and racks. We'll run the models by ourselves. Look at what India gains. They're going to gain jobs and capital expenditure because US examples like Michigan show that 2,500 plus construction jobs, 450 permanent roles and 1,500 surrounding community jobs all for a single campus. And India could now see this across multiple states. Then of course you've got components like latency and reliability because running workloads inside India reduces the cable dependency, it cuts the geopolitical risk and improves performance of your experience. And this signals power because India becomes a hosting ground for the world's top AI models. But India must ask the hard question. Hyperscaler data centers consume huge water volumes and can strain local power grids. And some US regions also saw electricity bills jump over 200%. And places like Salain faced backlash over fast track power approvals without public hearings. So if OpenAI and Tata build something similar in India, these, these issues can't of course be afterthoughts because India's advantage is that, look, we're building second, not first. We can learn from the global mistakes and design better rules around tariffs, renewable energy, water use and public consultation. Again, folks, we've covered this extensively here on front page with experts voicing their thoughts. So make sure to check it out. And a detailed deep dive with myself, a debunked segment as well. Make sure to check all of them out. So let's go back. In one of our earlier front page episodes, Yota CEO Sunil Gupta said something that's quite important. Sovereignty doesn't mean blocking foreign technology. It means welcoming companies like OpenAI and Nvidia, but, but ensuring Indians control the data, jobs and its own destiny. And the last line is the heart of tonight's story because if OpenAI runs its India workloads on Tata TCS Hypervolt, they're not just asking, is OpenAI coming to India? They're asking who controls the levers? Is it going to be Tata, OpenAI or a mix of India, AI and US policy? And where does our critical data sit? In a regulated Indian region or effectively in a US controlled AI stack just with an Indian zip code? And of course, do our Indian startups and researchers get affordable access to this compute? Or does it become a closed door elite cloud for just a handful of global customers? Look, at the same time, India is doubling down on its own sovereign stack. We've got the India AI mission, 40,000 plus GPUs through players like Yota, powering models like Servam AI, Socket Labs, Bharat Gen and others. Then you have Google Adani's one gigawatt hub in Vizag, riding on green energy and subsea cables. Then of course, the newly inaugurated NTT's Bengaluru 4 campus adding 67.2 megawatts of AI ready IT load near the airport. So if Tata plus OpenAI joins this grid, India effectively has three parallel rails. You got the India led sovereign infra with Yota and the India AI mission, of course, then joint ventures with global hyperscalers like Google Adani and NTT, for examples. Then model labs like OpenAI docking into the infra giants like Tata and maybe other players later. 
So the risk is overlap without strategy and the opportunity is orchestration where India uses all three rails to become not just a user of AI but one of the core switchboards of the world's AI power grid. So folks tell us in the comments should India welcome open AI startup powered expansion as a strategic win or insist on a much tougher rules around water, power, tariffs, data before we plug into Stargate. This is Front Page by AIM TV. Like, share, and subscribe. Always remember, think AI, think AIM.